Hi, and welcome, welcome to Folgers. Folgers. I'm Angela. And I'm John. And now you're part of the Folgers family. As you know, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. In fact, we've been the best part of waking up for over 150 years. Thanks, Jeff. It's John. Tens of millions of people awake each morning to that unmistakable aroma, a freshly brewed cup of Folgers coffee. And once they take that first sip, it's like a veritable sign from the heavens that yes, today is gonna to be a fabulous day. Now that you're here, you'll soon find out how much love we put into every single cup of Folgers. From instant to gourmet, light to dark roasted, we make our coffee with the utmost care and precision, ensuring every Folgers drinker is completely satisfied. That's right, Jack. It's John. And as part of the Folgers family, you need to know that safety is our top priority. Our state-of-the-art facilities are home to an impressive variety of moving parts and machines, putting you in grave danger every single day that you're here. Seriously, this place is a death trap. So, welcome, welcome to, to Folgers, Folgers and be, be safe, safe out, out there. there. think you were going to get off that easy. That was pretty funny, wasn't it, Joe? It's John. The fact is, your well-being is really our top priority. Here at Folgers, adhering to our guidelines will ensure the safety of everyone and help us achieve our goal of zero injuries. Responsibility for safety and health is shared amongst all Folgers employees. Creating and maintaining a safe work environment is vital to the inner workings of our company. By knowing and following all safety and work regulations, employees can eliminate unsafe behaviors and conditions. All Folgers employees and contractors are responsible for identifying, confronting, and correcting unsafe behaviors and conditions and reporting the condition to a supervisor. Everyone has a responsibility to recognize and promote safe behavior in the workplace. Engineering or administrative controls, including personal protective equipment, will be used to reduce the impact of any potential hazard that cannot be eliminated completely. Training employees in safety is highly important to everyone at Folgers. If you feel that your safety training is inadequate, please share your concerns with your supervisor or plant contact. Don't hesitate to ask questions about requirements and guidelines. Take pride in your work, as well as the quality provided to our customers. You said it, Jerry. A simple taste of goodness. Report all injuries to your supervisor immediately. Failure to do so will result in disciplinary action, like a timeout, or worse. You're required to wear ANSI approved sturdy safety shoes or boots at all times, Show them, Jared. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't forget about those peepers. Approved safety glasses with side shields and hard hats should be worn by all construction personnel at all times in work areas. Glasses should be worn coming to and leaving your work area. All grinding operations require the use of safety glasses and a face shield. Sunglasses or tinted glasses are not allowed inside, even if you think they make you look cool. Nah. Dun, dun. Hearing protection is required in most areas of the plant, and when using loud can... Hearing protection is required in most areas of the plant, and when using loud construction equipment, and I don't mean earbuds, dude, you can find proper hearing protection throughout the facility and signage designating appropriate areas. You're also required to wear gloves for work activities. Keep your gloves on your person, ready for use at all times while at work. We have specific gloves for special tasks, like handling solvents and chemicals. If a tool manufacturer requires the gloves not be worn while operating their equipment, then don't wear them. Wear hair nets and beard nets in all operating areas, including the roof, silos, and storage buildings. Protection is vital. Keep all of your personal protective equipment clean and sanitary and have it inspected regularly to make sure it's in good condition. Use barricades, flags, or signs to identify hazards in your work area. Extension cords and welding cables must be elevated above the area or securely taped down whenever possible. If you're welding, tarps or screens will be needed to protect others. Always maintain a clear radius around your work area. Should you have a question, please see your plant contact. Keep all areas free of scraps and debris. Store all of your equipment and tools in designated lockers or bins. At the end of each shift, make sure to sweep your area with a broom. If there's a fire and you're unable to put it out with just one portable extinguisher, 
pull the nearest fire alarm and evacuate the area, unless you're a fire watch. All fires, no matter how small, must be reported to your supervisor. Oil or chemical spills should be cleaned up immediately and reported to the environmental leader. Any free-flowing used oil from cleanup materials must be treated as used oil. Only dry, oily rags may be deposited in the trash. All liquid containers greater than 55 gallons must be stored on spill containment or in a diked area. Never put liquids in waste dumpsters. <laughs> Never put fluorescent bulbs or batteries in waste dumpsters. Use proper recycling containers. Waste containers must stay closed except for when waste is being added or removed. Aerosol cans must be disposed of at the aerosol can puncturing stations. Do not use compressed air on equipment or your clothes at any time. It's just not a great idea. Personal fall arrest systems or fall protective systems must be used when you work at four feet above ground or higher. Ensure that you're tied to a designated tie-off point. No metal or wooden ladders are allowed on site. All ladders must be placed on a stable and level surface. Never stand at the top of two steps of any step ladder or the top three rungs of any extension ladder. Straight ladders must be tied off at the top, extend at least three feet above the top landing and must be placed at the proper slope. Safely store all ladders when they aren't in use. If storing the ladder vertically, secure it with a chain. If horizontally, be sure not to present a trip hazard. When going up and down stairs, keep to your right side. Hold the handrail and take one step at a time. Stop, look, and listen at intersections. Vehicles always have the right of way. Utilize the overhead mirrors and stay in the pedestrian aisles marked by green or yellow lines. Running is prohibited. And this ain't Nike, so just don't do it. Oh. Use pedestrian doors when they are available. Don't walk through roll-up doors unless pushing or pulling a load, or no pedestrian door is available. All scaffolding must meet OSHA requirements and be erected by qualified individuals. Carefully check tools and equipment before you choose. Any damaged tools will be removed from service. Ground fault circuit interrupters are required for all tools. If the scope of your contract to work includes confined space entry, hot work, or line breaking of hazardous systems, you must receive additional training. Hot work permits are required for any task that produces sparks or flames. <laughs> In compliance with federal regulations for electrical safety, each Folgers contractor must be properly qualified. Proof of qualification is required to be on file with the purchasing department prior to any work being performed. No exceptions. This includes opening electrical panels for inspection. In addition, areas around electrical panels shall be kept clear at all times. A minimum of three feet of clearance at the panel door opening is required. And panel doors must be able to be opened at a full 90 degrees. Barriers shall be used when there is a potential for non-qualified individuals to inadvertently enter the work zone. A completed energized work permit is required for all work to be performed on energized circuits greater than 50 volts. Only qualified operators are permitted to drive lift trucks. An inspection is required before any lift is used. <laughs> Do not ride on any vehicle unless there is a seat provided. We know it's Louisiana, but riding in the back of a pickup truck is prohibited. Before bringing any chemical on site, the NOLA chemical approval process must be completed and approved. Folgers maintains an online SDS library. Contact your Folgers sponsor if you need more information. In addition, you must complete documentation of hazardous communication as required by OSHA. Honestly though, why are you toting around hazardous chemicals anyway? Right? Train on potential hazards and proper use of chemicals applicable to the task being performed. This may include reviewing the health flammability reactivity rating and or the safety data sheet. Other hazardous materials of concern are natural gas, propane, caustic, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, radiation, and flavors. Carbon monoxide is a plant-wide asphyxiate hazard. If respirators are needed for any reason, documentation of the company's respiratory protection program is required. While on the job, make sure that you've removed all of your jewelry, including wristwatches, rings, and earrings. When entering your work area, make sure to look for the nearest emergency exit, as well as the nearest eye wash, safety shower, and fire alarm. Fire protection systems are life safety devices and are not to be tampered with for any reason. 
Do not work on, tamper with, or disable any fire safety devices such as a fire alarm, a fire pump, or a sprinkler system. And remember, fire hydrants are life-saving devices too. Do not tamper with or open them for any reason. Don't even let your dog pee on them. Which reminds me, don't bring your dog to work. If you're an on-site contractor, it's important that you follow the lock-out, tag-out procedure for your health and safety. Do not put your hands or legs in moving machinery. Before cleaning, repairing, or entering equipment, make sure the equipment is fully stopped. Disconnect the associated energy sources such as electric, air, gravity, and hydraulics. Before removing your lock, be sure to replace all equipment it's guarding. Any exceptions must be approved and documented. Before starting a piece of equipment, check to see that no one is in danger and call out, stand clear, like this. Stand clear! Great work, Jimmy. Do not bypass any safety device. This includes guards, disconnects, fuses, circuit breakers, relief valves, interlocks, and dock locks. Do not operate equipment unless you've been qualified by a trainer. Each person working on a piece of equipment must use and remove their own lock. Lock out all energy sources before you install, adjust, inspect, clean, lubricate, or service equipment. Always refer to the Folgers Plant Isolation of Hazardous Energy Standard for further information. Or for fun, it's a great read. If a lock needs to be removed by someone other than the lock owner, begin the process by filling out the lock removal form. Lock out and tag out all the energy sources for equipment that will be unattended for more than one shift. Also do this when leaving the plant. All contractors must park in the designated parking area. If you park in the employee designated spaces, your car will be towed. If you don't have a gate card to access the turnstile, contact the guard at the gate and sign in. The guard will provide you with a temporary contractor badge. Your gate card is for your use only. If your card isn't working, do not use another person's card. Follow the sign-in procedures at the gate and then notify your supervisor. Do not prop or leave open any exterior doors. Before exiting, briefcases, containers, personal tools, and lunch boxes could be checked. If you have a lunch box like this, we might make fun of you. Vehicles leaving the site will be checked at the gate. Contract employees are required to stay in their assigned work locations. All other areas of the plant are off limits. In addition, contract employees must use designated contractor facilities, including restrooms, locker rooms, break areas, and lunch rooms, unless otherwise directed by your plant agent. Contractor vehicles may be brought inside the gate with a parking pass from the plant. No more than two vehicles per company will be admitted. Personal vehicles and rental cars are not allowed inside the gate. All contractor vehicles must be clearly labeled. Personal cell phones should only be used in the break area during break times. Sorry folks, that person you're wooing on eHarmony is just gonna have to wait. And cameras and video equipment are not allowed on site without a permit. And if you'd really like to lose your job, here's how you can do it in no time at all. Consume drugs or alcohol on plant property. Bring weapons of any kind onto plant property. Use tobacco or e-cigarettes. Harass your coworkers. Create a hostile work environment. Fight, steal, and gamble. These are all serious violations and will result in immediate termination. Good health and hygiene are both very important at Folgers and in life. If you have a communicable disease like the flu or pneumonia, you cannot work in any production area. If your symptoms include coughing, sneezing, nasal drip, sniffling, notify your manager and stay away from that production area. In fact, you should probably stay away altogether because that's disgusting. If you have skin eruptions, an extreme rash, boils, sores, or open wounds on your hands or face, you may not work in the production area. Make sure your hands are clean before working in the production area. Wash your hands thoroughly with the soap provided in the washrooms before each shift, after lunch and breaks, and have to use in the potty. Never use gloves in lieu of hand washing. Keep your fingernails clean and trimmed. Seriously, go get a mani-pedi. Also, fake eyelashes, fake nails, and nail polish are not allowed in the production area. If you need to wear a Band-Aid, it must be a company-provided metal-detectable Band-Aid. Keep Band-Aids clean and secure at all times. Cover with gloves in the product stream area. Basic personal production gear includes a hairnet and a beard cover. 
These must be worn in the production area to ensure that packing materials and finished products aren't contaminated by hair. It doesn't matter if you have a full beard, a mustache, mutton chops, a Fu Manchu, a Van Dyke, a Sparrow, a chin curtain, a handlebar and chin puff, or a goatee, you must wear a beard cover. And even if you're bald, you must wear a hairnet. Contractors involved in packing or manufacturing must wear clean smocks. All employees must wear long pants in production and non-production areas. Food, drinks, and candy are not allowed in any operating or production area. Store all food, drinks, and candy in designated lunchrooms. Do not store or consume food or drinks in locker rooms or in bathrooms. It's against policy and it's disgusting. You may consume electrolyte replacements and designated heat surveillance areas that have been approved by health services and QA. And finally, don't chew gum. From all of us here at Folgers, we're so glad you're here. Right, Jack? Yes, and remember, all of our regulations were created to help us achieve our goal of zero injuries. Your safety truly is our top priority. So welcome to Folgers, and don't forget. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. You do know it's John, right? Uh, that's why I had this shirt made, kind of help you with mine. You know, I wish it would have gone sooner. You threw a lot of